Good evening. Hello out there. <clears throat> Happy Wine Wednesday here at Rutherford Hill. It's a pleasure to be here again with you and share this time together. Um, oh, my computer. Okay, I'm going to ignore it. Um, so thanks again for joining us. Um, here another day, beautiful day here in Napa Valley. For those of you that are not close by, we have another 90 degree uh, day today and um, we are doing our tasting. We thought we'd move inside today. And um, yeah, okay, here we go. So um, welcome again to Wine Wednesday here at Rutherford Hill. Um, for those of you that do not know who I am, my name is Marisa Taylor. I'm the winemaker here at Rutherford Hill Winery. And it is my pleasure to be here joining uh, this virtual tasting time together here in June with you all. Uh, this is our second week of our uh, June tasting series that we have. Uh, last week we tasted the 2016 Ian Tiago, and this week we're going to be tasting some delicious uh, Sauvignon Blanc uh, from St. Helena. And then next week we have a Rutherford uh, Cabernet Sauvignon um, that's tasting quite nice these days too. And then if you ha are signing on for the bonus, uh, we also will be tasting an episode the following week, which I do believe is just right outside of June, but it is July 1st. So um, thank you uh, for being here. Uh, I did I? Okay, so um, as many of you, if you've joined us before, um, welcome back. And um, know that we um, have been doing uh, these pairings. So we've been with a Napa reopening. Really great to uh, partner with other local restaurants. And this week we are pairing with um, Zuzu, which is a Napa Valley culinary uh, legend. And um, if you are in Napa, you must try their delicious Spanish food. And today we have this delicious um, paella, which is one of their, their known dishes. It smells amazing. I cannot wait to try it. And um, just big shout out, thank you to Zuzu for, for, for this delicious food tonight to go with our Sauvignon Blanc. So. So be curious if what y'all made out there with your Sauvignon Blanc. Um, and so far we have lots of people drinking from all over. We've got from Texas, New Jersey, Wisconsin, Seattle, nice. Michigan, Minnesota. Welcome. From all, from all over. Yeah. And we have a couple Zuzu fans in the house. Yay. <laughs> well, then you know. <laughs> so... Um, Okay, so, um, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so, um, just a reminder too, just with the pairings too, is that just a nice reminder that we are starting, Napa Valley is reopening, and um, we are also reopening as well, so uh, please log on, we're a reservation only. Oh, and that was the other thing I wanted to mention too, uh, the first time in 18 years that Zuzu is now reservation only, so if you want to join enjoyed this delicious paella in the restaurant, you need to log in online and you can make a reservation just as you can if you come to RutherfordHill.com. So we look forward to seeing you in this beautiful weather we're having. So um, so with that, we will get started. Um, but before we get started with the Salt Blanc, I just wanted to, to say thank you for your patience last week. We did have a little bit of technical difficulties. Uh, it was another warm day and uh, we, we we just had a little bit of a mishap. So uh, thank you for those of us that were able to find our second video. Uh, but I just thought I'd just quickly kind of talk about the Ian Tiago. Um, I hope you all out there that did ha have the bottle enjoyed it, uh, our 2016 Ian Tiago, which is a wine that we made um, in honor of two, two boys, my son Ian, and the assistant winemaker at the time, and my good friend Anna, her son Tiago. And so we made the first wine in 2009, the year the boys were born. And um, it was a 50-50 blend of Malbec and Cabernet Sauvignon. They were our two favorite uh, blocks that year. And we thought, why not put them, put them together and keep it just nice and simple. And two boys, two varietals. And we loved it. So it was the first wine that we had blended that year. And uh, we tried a couple other blends, but we just came back to it. And it was just... We both felt like it was magic, so um, that that's the story of how it became Ian Tiago. Uh, the Trilados, when the boys were born, said it would you know wouldn't it be great to, to make a wine in honor of the boys, and um, and that's what we did. So we came up with so um, first vintage was 2009, and then we um, took a break in 
started making it again in 2012 because we had such a request for it. So it's really fun, special to my heart, and um, I hope you all enjoyed it. So thank you for joining us last week and sticking with us, and thank you for coming back. So we really appreciate you. Um, and let's get started, shall we, with a little bit of Sauve Blanc here. Um, this is our 2018 St. Helena Sauvignon Blanc. If, um, if you know, if you've had our Sauvignon Blanc before, you're probably going, St. Helena, I thought you did salt Rutherford. And you will be correct. We, made a, we make a Rutherford in uh, 2016. Uh, we started um, replanting our vineyard um, on, in Rutherford on Mulane, and um, we needed to, we were lucky enough to find this vineyard uh, to get this fruit in uh, St. Helena, and we actually are making um, this two vintages of the St. Helena Sauv Blanc in 18 and in 19, and um, it's just the south end of St. Helena Appalachian. It's actually kind of almost on the border between Rutherford and St. Helena, and um, delicious, well, I think it's delicious. We'll talk about it in a minute, but just a really cool vineyard um, on Spice Lane, uh, old vineyard, um, sustainably, organically farmed, um, which is really cool. And just there is a lot of just history, you know, like with older vines and you know, they're gnarly and, you know, not every spur position has shoots and just just so much flavor um, goes into these these little clusters. <laughs> they're just it's just an amazing vineyard. And um just really feel lucky again that we were able to find such a great vineyard uh, to make Sauvignon Blanc while we were redeveloping uh, our vineyard um, on Me Lane. So uh, stay tuned because 2020 we are, will be making Rutherford Sau Blanc again from our state grown um, Sau Blanc. So I'm super excited about that. So um, <laughs> which is true. I love Sauvignon Blanc. It's such a such a great wine, and um, just really excited to be making wine from our vineyard. So. So stay tuned for that. We'll get to that in another year or so. So, but for now, we'll talk about this 2018 Sauv Blanc. And oh, and the other thing too is if you have any outstanding questions from like last week when we talked about the Antiago or anything about this week, feel free to type questions and Hannah will make sure that she asks them. And if not, I will log in next, tomorrow and I will answer them the best I can if I don't get to them. So please, please, please. Um, here, here to answer questions. So, um, so let's talk about the 2018. Um, we'll start with the vintage. Um, 2018, um, we had a lot of uh, rain, and if you remember back, for those of us that are here, that in 18 we had a lot of uh, rain early in the year. So, like February, winter time, we got a nice uh, bout of rain, which is great because it replenishes all those the soil moisture and all that, and um, we had a little bit of a delayed, um, well, we, I, I mentioned it last week, uh, bloom and set, which is the fruit. So when the fruit's blooming and then it sets, and so we have the clusters. Actually, I was out in the vineyard yesterday. They're getting bigger. The berries are filling in. Um, but during that time in 18, it was a little bit of a later bloom and set. Um, but even though it was later, we had ideal conditions for bloom and set. So we had a great set. So we had a um, little bit as a, as a, Crop load was a little bit above average, but it was just beautiful. And um, we had the type of summer, what we refer to the growing season, um, into fall. We just had um, a lot of light, a lot of just moderate temperature. It wasn't like we had a lot of hot heat spikes. It just we had a nice mild, a lot of heat uh, during the summer and into the fall. We actually had a warmer fall that year. Um, and it just was a, one of those years that we were able to just let things hang and um, just really develop that the fruit just slowly developed and the sugars didn't just you know go from zero to 50 or, but it just it just had a nice even ripening uh, for the vintage and um, we actually end up picking this the fruit that went into this wine on September mid-September September 14th uh, which when I was looking back at uh, the history of when we've harvested our Sauv Blanc it weren't it was a different vintage um, Appalachian, but still that where our Rutherford fruit is, it's quite close. Um, this was a little bit later than we normally do. Usually it's the first week of September. So um, really curious to see how this year's um, playing out is that we've had a little similar to 18 where we had the uh, little later bloom and set. However, we had a little bit different. Our weather has been 
we've been calling it, I've been calling it wonky. <laughs> we've just had this like this weather during the set that you know we would have this um, cool and then it was windy and hot. We had this heat, so the weather wasn't steady like it was in eighteen. So um, we'll see what how it transpires. We're looking at right now, as I mentioned, I was in vineyard yesterday, and um, the fruit. Some vineyards, um, there's a little. The set is a little uneven, which was reminds reminds us of uh, 15, 2015, we had a, an uneven set and did a lot of optical sorting. So it's really exciting. I mean, harvest is going to be here before you know it. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see what we end up doing with the fruit. But it, it really is great to be out there now because you get in your head of, from a winemaking perspective, what we need to be preparing for, like, you know, sorting and all that good stuff. But it looks great out there. So <laughs> exciting. And then also just on that uh, front about harvest, I'm just sidebarring a little bit, is that today we actually received our first shipment of barrels. So that for me is always a sign of, oh That's my true. goodness, we're almost we're almost there. And the summer just seems to fly by because we, we just are finishing our bottling for Rutherford Hills 2018 wines, breads. And uh, yeah, it's just super exciting. So it's just great about um, what I love about this industry too is the cycles, the seasons of what the of what the business is and what we do as winemakers and just as companies, as staff here at the winery, that it's just exciting to see that we're we're just about we're just transitioning into this really exciting time. So busy day today, bottling Napa Valley Merlot and receiving barrels. So, anyways, so anyways, okay. So, shall we talk about the, the Sauvignon Blanc? Uh huh. And um, we have. A couple people who have said tasting notes so far that they're getting. Oh, um, cool. What are you getting out there? Helen right. says to her palate, it tastes a little bit like a sunstare so in young blonde. Oh, yeah. Um, with noticeable minerality, then uh, then most tropical fruit, you know, SBs. Mm -hmm. And then Jim Taylor uh, <laughs> says crisp, refreshing with Asian pear in the finish. Wonderful. Hello out there, everyone. And hi, Dad. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's I think that's a good analogy, the sunstare. Um, it, it does have a little bit of that um, that aroma and the minerality. I, I would say I think both of both of your descriptions are great for this wine. One thing that's really fun um, this wine that we did do is we did do a small portion. I'm going to check my notes real quick of um, barrel fermented along with the, um, our tank fermented. So it's a nice uh, balance that it brings. I think it's ten maybe ten fifteen percent. Anyways, we did a little of neutral, so it's not new, like the new barrels that just arrived today, not that fresh oak. It's a one and two year filled barrels, which are my favorite barrels for white wine. Um, and, it, and for Sau Blanc, it just gives you that nice nuances of the, um, the spice. And then just even on the palate, it kind of fills in the texture. Um, and it just like a nice blend, nice, you know, blends well with the tank fermented Sau Blanc, which really retains the, the fruit and the, just to me the acidity comes across in a different way so I feel like the barrel component just like softens it a little bit um so super fun I I love this one <laughs> I was really happy with the way it turned out and it's nice to sit down here and try it and I haven't had it in a while um so super exciting I hope you are enjoying it as much as I am but I agree with you about the aromas they were I think they were saying pear and there was um the minerality as well mm -hmm. there's also like a for me like um Light, maybe a floral of something like maybe a, a citrus blossom or a, maybe more like a pear blossom and that I get for myself. Yeah. Um, Paul is asking how does um, RSB, like a general mm -hmm. comparison between New Zealand SBs and, oh, and that's SBs. Okay. I'll answer the, that question in a minute, but one, one more thing I want to make about the, for me, because I really like the texture of the wine. It's not like really claw clawing for me, and I just feel like it's nice and balanced. Um, and I just, for me, that makes me really excited because I think it's a great standalone wine that you can have um, by itself. Um, I was joking with them earlier that, well, not joking, my mom loves this wine too. She loves Sau Blanc. It's one of her patio sip wines. We have it on Mother's Day. And it's, um, it's just a great standalone wine, but then also a great food-friendly wine. So I think it's going to pair really nicely with the paella or whatever you made at home. <laughs> and so, and then talking about different styles of Sauvignon Blanc, Sauvignon Blanc is one of those varietals that you can 
there's so many different styles that you can do as far as if you pick it early, if you, you know, you'll get more of the grassy um, notes in there maybe, and then you can also get really ripe um, aromas, you can get like gooseberry or tropical, um, and then there's everything in between, like you can get the pear, the citrus, and then also if you think about how you ferment it too, if you want to retain all those, you know, maybe citrus or the, like we were talking about the, the acidity, um, the tank fermented really captures the fruit, whereas if, you know, you play a little bit with the barrel and different, maybe different size um, capa capacity vessels that you ferment into, like you can do stainless steel barrels or, I mean, there's lots of things that concrete folks play with too that changes the texture. So um, I'm sidebarring from what New Zealand, to me, <laughs> New Zealand is, um, I think there's more of that grassy note for me in New Zealand wines. And um, I prefer to make it a little bit in a more riper style, I guess, but not overly ripe. I, I like it to be that nice balance. And I think what we're really lucky and what shows in this wine is that, that how that vintage was for 18 with the steady ripening. And so it, it, it gave it more time for the fruit to uh, develop the complexity uh, in the grapes. And just really, I think you see that in the fruit and in the, in the texture of the wine. So... And then, you know, then you get magic in the glass. So, um, yeah. Um, question from Elizabeth. Yes. What temperature do you ferment your tank portion? What temperature do I tank? Well, that's a good question, Elizabeth. <laughs> um, I, I ferment it on the cooler side to help re uh, retain the, um, the aromas and the fruit in the, in the tank. So it is a slower uh, ferment. It's around 50. 50, and then if we need to, we just let it go slow, and then we often will turn it up just a little bit, uh, maybe to 55 <laughs> if we need to. But um, yeah, we do a nice steady slow uh, ferment, and then the barrel component um, that we do, it ends up being, it goes a little bit faster of a ferment, um, because we do have it in a chilled area, you know, it's more of a 60 degree our warehouse that we do. Um, so it goes a little faster, so I like that... Um, to compensate that a little bit with the slower, cooler ferment in the tank, and then we put it together. So, and then we this is often the the first wine that we bottle every year too. So um, that along with our rosés, if you're familiar with our rosés, so it's always our first bottling that we do at the end of February. Okay. What else was I going to talk about? Lots of things. As a sidebar, what did you say we're bottling? Oh, as a sidebar, oh, today we were bottling our Napa Valley Merlot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do we have anything else? Okay. Uh, so the other thing that I thought was a little fun fact was um, to talk a little bit about, um, you know, we are Rutherford Appalachian, and, you know, Napa Valley we're known, we have 16 different Appalachians, and to talk about that little Appalachian just north of us, um, St. Helena, um, this was the first time, I'm trying to think of, there may have been, no when, when we were making some Zinfandel, maybe a decade ago, I, we bought some Zinfandel also from St. Helena Appalachian, but it was really exciting for me as a winemaker, it's fun to play with fruit from different parts of the valley, or different areas of this, you know, the state if you have that opportunity, but it's really great to really find new and exciting um, vineyards and just Appalachians and see what they're all about and play with the fruit. So um, St. Helena Appalachian is quite small. It, it's about 12,000 acres in totality and I think the, the vineyards planted is a little bit over 6,000. So about half of it and it's from, if you are familiar with Napa, um, from Zinfandel Lane um, to, to Bale Lane. That's kind of the borders of St. Helena and then uh, to the east it goes up to Howell Mountain and I believe it's Con Valley Road that crosses. That's where the border is there. And then also up to the west of the Maya Camus, um, up to about 400 foot elevation is the little area of St. Helena. And, and it is an hourglass shape, which I thought was really cool. So, um, and it just, you know, it really comes in and you have the heat. It really, with the two mountain ranges and how narrow it gets, uh, really captures the heat, holds the heat. Um, so you get a lot of great ripening, and that's why a lot of the Bordeaux varieties are grown up in St. Helena. I mean, in Napa you find them, but it's also known for the, and also Sauvignon Blanc 
And then you also have this great cooling effect. It does cool down um, as well. So you get like this shift of um, about a 40 degree shift sometimes of the temperature. So I just thought that was really cool and I just wanted to share that <laughs> a little bit of knowledge because I was just like, it's great. And also just remembering again, getting back to the vintage of 18. That's also what it was known for, is that just even as a vintage throughout Napa, is that we had these great, this great heat uh, for ripening, and then we had these, these maritime influences that just helped cool things down and just really help for great ripenings for that year. So, you know, you got to watch out. Those 18s or reds are getting bottled too, so stay tuned. We've got some great things to show you. Mm -hmm. um, and back to like what people are tasting. Mm -hmm. Tim said he's tasting. He tastes the grapefruit, but he also tastes a lot of apricot. Mm -hmm. Do you also taste that? Yeah. You taste it or the, like the aroma? Yeah. He says there's a lot of apricot. And then um, mm. Junior is tasting guava. Guava. Yeah. I could see that. Guava. I, I think both of those are great. Uh, guava. Um, yeah. I see that. I, you get a lot more, talking about New Zealand style, you'll also get a lot more if that was cranked up a little bit more. But I think for me, it's it's really subtle. And I do like the apricot, but you see how there's that complexity, how all these different aromas come together in the glass. And you know, some people don't think like white wines, you know, there's people that don't really care for white wines, uh, but you know, there there is a lot of complexity that you get in the glass uh, with white wine. And I think you get it with this as well. Mm -hmm. um, Sharon is asking, um, Hi, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly does limited release mean since it's on the label? Are, oh, okay. are some of our wines not okay, limited so, release? So uh, it's asking what is limited release. Um, it's on the, as you have the bottles at home, limited release there. A limited release is referred to, you only can buy it at the winery, and we make it in small volumes. Um, and it's um, primarily for wine club, but then also for, we do sell it in the, in the tasting room as well. So it's just a winery exclusive wine. That, that's that's another way of saying it. Mm -hmm. Thanks for asking. Yes. And then someone else is asking if the SB is available at the tasting room now. Yes. The SB is available now at the tasting room. I believe if you're part of our wine club, we just shipped out our 2019. So you can get the 2019 version and do side by sides um, if you are a wine club member. So you can sign up for that one too. But that just went out in the May, the summer shipment. So mm -hmm. that's also available. If you're a wine club member, <laughs> only. <laughs> oh. um, and earlier, you when we were getting ready, you were talking a little bit about the soils. Did you already? Yeah, go about the alluvial. Yeah, alluvial soils. Yep, I think it's good. Cool. What else can I tell you about this wine? When I also I mentioned it was one of my mom's favorite wines. Um, also, early on in my career here, I, I started here at the winery in 2004. Uh, I think it was in the 2007, I want to say. It was early on when I was here as a Tony Trilato. So the, the winery, if you don't know that, the, Tony, the Trilato family owns Rutherford Hill Winery. And, and the Trilatos, we had a sales meeting out here, and Tony was here. And he was very complimentary about the Sauvignon Blanc and, and had some shipped to his house. So it was really great. So, um, yeah, it's just one of my fond memories. Of, I have lots of fond memories of the Trilatos, but that's one of them. I think about Tony when I when I open up a bottle of Blanc early on in my career, so makes a big impression. <laughs> Are there any other pairings that you like to enjoy the SB with aside from what we have tonight? Um, other pairings, okay. Um, let me think about this. Well, I do think, as I mentioned before, I think it's a great wine to to have on the patio and to visit with family and friends, especially on a hot day. It's just it goes down very easy. Um, I don't know what other pairings. I mean, I eat a lot of, um, I would say, you know, seafood for me. I really love it with um, some nice, you know, fish, white fish, or, um, you know, I think I look at this with the mussels. I think that's just a really great pairing as well. Um, and I, you know, I also like, you know, I love it with salads. So um, I'm a big salad, <laughs> salad eater. <laughs> so, you know, I think I, I can go just about anything like that. Maybe some pastas with like, it's a great, oh, that's another one. If you're making something with a white wine sauce, right? Perfect, perfect wine for that. You know, and then a little bit for the chef and then have it with the meal. So. And I think that dovetails with Holly asked a question on like what appetizer or cheese would we serve 
I recommend serving with it at a party. And I think she said at the beginning that she's having like a ricotta type pasta. Yeah, that, that would work. That. Yeah. Right. I think, I mean, again, my whole philosophy with food and wine pairings is that there's really, there's rarely like something that doesn't work. I mean, sometimes you'll find those pairings go, oh, that's not the right wine. But really, it's meant to be, you know, fun, right? You know, we all have different palates and we all have different foods that we enjoy. And, you know, why not just play? There's, there's no reason not to play and experiment with your food and wine pairing. So um, I say just go for it and have fun with it. I mean, that's what, you got to have fun in life, right? And what better way to have fun than what you're drinking and eating? So, um, yeah, don't, don't worry about the pairing bit. That's why I think I get so tongue-tied on what, what would I have that with, you know? For me, it's about being in the moment and, you know, and honestly, like, how's the weather? How am I feeling? You know, especially with this great weather. Yeah, I want to have some self long, you know, and, um, and what are, you know, so just be fluid in it. Well, everyone's been very enthusiastic with ideas. We have oysters oh, from Megan, goat awesome. cheese from Elizabeth, calamari oh. from Junior. Ooh, calamari, that'd um, be good. Paella with scallops instead of mussels. Ooh, love that. See, all variations of this, you know, that's yeah. great. Um, okay, so then we probably only have time for one or two more questions if anyone has a burning question. But Any more burning questions yeah. out there? One or two more questions? Well, one question from Pat is, what types of experiences are we offering at the winery right now? So where can they find like our offerings? Um, I believe they'll be able to find them online. And um, again, I, we talk about the fluidity of pairings, food and wine pairings, as we reopen and as things, we get our, you know, it's a fluid situation as well for doing um, reservations and all that good stuff. We are offering um, reservations out the Oak, if you've been here before, the Oak Grove, the picnic area, um, where you can currently, I believe it's bottle service that could change to flight, but for now it's bottle. Um, and you can find that, I believe, if you go online. To, and where is uh -huh. it? On the Visit Us page. On the Visit Us page. So when you go to the rutherfordhill.com, there's a Visit Us, and you'll be able to find that information there. I will mention because there is that we do and we do list kind of the the new regulations of kind of rules to follow, but it is 21 and over, so you'll have to um, plan accordingly. Um, Ian won't be coming to the winery anytime soon, so uh, just mentioning that because I know um, you know I get it. We want to get out and get there, but know that know that little bit of information. But yes, go to RutherfordHill.com and the visit winery link there, and mm -hmm. it'll be able to. Sh Show you all the good stuff. So, but also, you know, call too, I guess, and you can chat with folks as well. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, by appointment only. By appointment only, if I didn't say that. So, yeah. Awesome. Okay. So, I just wanted to wrap up. Thank you again for joining me here on this Wine Wednesday. I really enjoy this time that we get to share together. And I wish you um, health and happiness. And um, until next week, cheers. <laughs>